Chael Sonnen recently called a pretty interesting question on one of his uh, YouTube videos, and I thought that I had to answer it. So the question that he raised was, it had a lot to do with the, uh, the upcoming middleweight championship fight between Israel Adesanya, the champion, and his, champion, and his challenger, Robert Whitaker. They're going to fight on Saturday for the middleweight championship of the world. And so the question that Chael Sonnen asked stemmed from comments that Israel Adesanya made about Robert Whitaker, where he basically said, Robert Whitaker is not a good guy. Now, I'm not entirely sure how it is that Israel Adesanya could have reached that conclusion about Robert Whitaker. I definitely don't see that you know, in anything that I've examined in Robert Whitaker's career. But the question that Chael Sonnen had to ask kind of diverged from that a little bit. And the question that he asked was simply this, was, do we care whether or not a fighter is a good guy or not? And I think coming from a guy with, from Chael Sonnen, from a guy with Chael Sonnen's history, I thought that question was kind of on point. Because as much as I like Chael Sonnen, I think that we do have to kind of acknowledge that throughout his career, you know, he was not always, he was not always a good guy. Uh, there were times where he was definitely, he definitely wasn't, say, as bad as his opponents. You know, I mean, like, for example, between John Jones and Chael Sonnen. Yeah, I think it's pretty obvious. I mean, Chael's no, <laughs> Chael's no angel. He doesn't pretend to be, you know, he calls himself the American gangster for a reason. Um, but he's definitely not as bad as John Jones is. But to me, I was really amazed by the question. Just the sense that we would even ask that. I mean, do we care if a fighter is a good guy? And I think that really, like, if the answer is anything other than yes, I think that you have to rethink, I think you have to sit down and rethink your life a little bit. And that's a really... I know it's kind of a really tough statement to come out and make because, I mean, let's face it, you know, some of the most popular stars in this sport, you know, are not what you would call good guys. Well, I don't think that John Jones is a good guy. I think that John Jones is kind of an awful person. And I think that we have seen that, we've very much seen that within the last year, you know, with the, uh, the domestic violence stuff and with so many things prior to that. I mean, with the doping, you know, you know, the gun violence, the hit and run, all of that stuff. Yeah, John Jones is, is not a good guy. But even guys that I've cheered for in the past, you know, guys like, say, Conor McGregor. <laughs> and uh, I know that I've harped a little bit on Conor McGregor on this podcast. But really, my views, they just are what they are. You know, I used to be a big fan of Conor McGregor. Now, not so much anymore, and one of the big reasons why is because, yeah, Conor McGregor, I think it's safe to say, is not a good guy. And when I was a much more casual fan than I am now, I mean, back when the Conor McGregor fights were really the only fights that I really was tuning in to see, you know, unless, say, George St. Pierre came out of retirement again or something like that, I think that was one thing, but when the pandemic hit and the UFC kind of really seized my attention because it was pretty much the only game in town in terms of live sports, it kind of forced me at a certain point to sit down and rethink that, to really sit down and think about this sport and think about what it is. And I think that the biggest thing that kind of spurred me to rethink whether or not I could continue to be a fan of Conor McGregor and support Conor McGregor was this was that I kind of realized that the UFC and mixed martial arts, I think that of all the different sports that are out there, I think that they are the sports that tell us the most about people. And I got to thinking about it, and I thought to myself that, you know, of all the things in this sport that could really advertise your values to the rest of the world, the fighters that you cheer for, I think, really advertise your your values to the rest of the world. And so then you look at the things that Conor McGregor had been doing, you know, the way that he treats his opponents. I have to admit, it was fun to watch. You know, he puts on a pretty good show in terms of promoting a fight, but looking back on it now, 
you know, I don't, I don't really so much like what enjoying that said about me as a person. And so right there, on one hand, I kind of had to rethink, you know, I, had to, I had to rethink what kind of person I wanted to be and whether or not I could continue cheering for this guy in order to become that person. And of course, it wasn't the only thing. You know, the only, you know, of course, the uh, the other big issue that really stood out to me was the uh, was his assault on that uh, that 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 elderly gentleman. Well, I mean, I guess we say he's an elderly gentleman, but it turns out, like within the last year, the fact has come out that apparently this guy was this guy was actually only fifty years old at the time that he was <laughs> that uh, that that Connor punched him, uh, but he looked like he was at least seventy or eighty. Um, so obviously, some some real hard living there. Uh, but one thing that I had to really stop and think about was, you know, the fact that one day, God willing, I'm going to be that old. And so I had to ask myself the question, like, what kind of world do I want to live in when I get to be that old? And the answer that I could not bring myself to reach was that I wanted to be, I wanted to live in a world where a 30 something year old professional fighter, you know, could walk up to me and punch me in the face while I'm an old man. You know, old man, all that stuff is kind of obviously, you know, in the past. And now you've got this young lion. And for whatever reason, for whatever it is that he, uh, that he feels offended by, just walks up and just jacks your jaw in a bar. That's not the kind of world that I want to live in. So I guess the one thing that I really couldn't say about it was that it was all driven by values. Because it really wasn't. There was kind of this personal and pragmatic end to it. You know, what kind of world could I be creating tomorrow by continuing to support this guy? And, you know, even if I do turn around and, you know, even though I did kind of turn around and withdraw my uh, my fandom a little bit. You know, I do realize I'm only one fan. In the long and short of it, it doesn't make much of a difference. You know, whatever <laughs> whatever the uh, whatever the world might become because people like Conor McGregor. I don't really have that much of an <laughs> of an influence on that. That's going to happen either way. But at least when those days finally do come and if it does turn out to have been a bad thing, like I kind of suspect that, that maybe it could be, I would at least be able to say that, uh, that I, I did my part to try to make it different, to try to make it better. And, uh, you know, it's not always the easiest or the most fun kind of road to pursue. I mean, it kind of almost sometimes makes a person feel like this, uh, you know, like this annoying scold, you know, who just uh, wants to spoil everybody's fun and everybody just wants to watch a guy who is admittedly one of the most fun fighters on the planet. And you're kind of the guy sitting there and it's like, hey, yeah, well, you know what kind of person he is. But honestly, I just couldn't look away from it. And then, of course, there's the other side of the issue. right? Do you care? You know, maybe this, this is a matter of two different questions. You know, do you care if a fighter is a bad guy or do you care if he's a good guy? And I think I very much do care if a fighter is a good guy. You know, Dustin Poirier. Uh, I know I've said this a few times already, but I'm going to say it over and over again to as many people as I can get to listen to it. I think that Dustin Poirier represents the best thing, all of the best things about this sport. Not just in the way that he can go into a cage and whoop somebody's ass, you know, although he didn't get it done against Oliveira. But not just because of that, but because of all the things that he does outside of the cage. Because of who he is outside of the cage. And I think that if Dustin Poirier were, in fact, to retire the way that I hear people speculating about, I think he'll take something very important about this sport with him when he goes. <laughs> now, as it pertains to Chael Son, and I think he's right about a lot of things. I mean, we do have to recognize what this sport is. It's, it's cage fighting. Like, it's cage fighting. You know, two tough guys go into a cage, and they just beat the hell out of each other, and whoever can beat the hell out of the other guy better is the guy that wins the fight. And he's the guy that's going to be the champion. And so it's kind of a, a sport where obviously there is some sort of a, 
of a premium on not being a good guy. You know, on being willing to go as far as you can within the rules, maybe sometimes even breaking the rules, skirting the rules. You know, to get yourself that advantage and win that fight. Yeah, I recognize that. Almost from like a, from an evolutionary basis, I see that. But I mean, that's just kind of more of a statement on what the sport is. But it doesn't really tell us what the sport could be. You know, it kind of tells us what this sport does put into the world, and I think that we have to recognize that. But it doesn't really show us what this sport could put into the world. And maybe I think my final point, and uh, it kind of sucks to say this because, like I said before, I mean, I do like Chael Sonnen. I actually like him quite a bit. But I kind of feel like, you know, the question of do we care whether or not a fighter is a good guy, I kind of feel like he needs that answer to be no. And as for Israel Adesanya, I mean, he's, I'm a fan, so I'm not really eager to jump out and say a bunch of bad stuff and badmouth him. But, you know... For him to be saying that sort of thing about Bobby Knuckles, I don't really think that it means as much coming from him as he thinks it does. I mean, I don't think that Israel Adesanya is a bad guy, but he has definitely at times in his fight career shown what I would consider to be questionable character. You know, and he has a guy that has actually had to kind of win me back over the years. And really, if somebody came to me and they kind of posed to me in that form of a question, like, you know, based on the quality of the person, who would you rather have in this sport? You can either have Robert Whitaker or you could have Israel Adesanya. You know, as much as I don't really want to knock on Israel Adesanya very much, I do think that I would pick Robert Whitaker over Israel Adesanya almost any other day of the week.